Greetings and welcome to another Pokemon 2019 or Pokemon Journeys anime episode review. This time I am talking about episode 145, which is episode 9 of Aim to be a Pokemon Master. So let's get to it. In this episode, Team Rocket's Deli Bird makes a special delivery to Jesse, James, and Meowth. First, they get boxed launches to satiate their hunger. Second, they get all the Pokemon they left at the Team Rocket headquarters. This leads to a heartfelt and a joyful reunion. Third, they get a golden statue of Giovanni that contains a message from him. He tells the Team Rocket trio, these are the Pokemon you caught across various regions. Take charge of managing them. After delivering the message, the statue explodes. And Deli Bird leaves with the Team Rocket trio bidding it farewell and thanking it. Seeing all their old Pokemon again makes Jesse and James remember their former Pokemon, thus allowing them to appear in a fantasy. Since they now have a veritable army of Pokemon and motivated by the memory of their former Pokemon, they believe that Giovanni expects them to prove themselves now that they have all their Pokemon with them and their wish to repay their boss for his kindness, they decide to catch Pikachu. To this end, they begin working on a plan. Said plan ends up being that Mime Jr. will play the role of a victim in order to earn the trust of Ash and friends. Mime Jr. will then lead them to a certain spot where an ambush awaits. On the way to said spot, all the other Pokemon will attack Ash and friends in order to separate them so Pikachu can end up isolated, thus making him much easier to catch. With the plan set, Team Rocket and their Pokemon spring into action. While Pikachu is wary of Mime Jr. at first, since he recognizes it as belonging to Team Rocket, Ash falls for the roofs, and eventually Pikachu does as well after Mime Jr. hits him in the fields with some good acting. Jesse, James, and Meowth then appear to sell the lie by saying, with some grade A acting, that Mime Jr. betrayed them, and it's currently on its way to meet up with Officer Jenny at a designated spot in order to sell them out. In order to avoid this, they are here to retrieve Mime Jr. Ash and friends decide to help Mime Jr. reach Officer Jenny. But first, Pikachu makes Team Rocket blast off again with Thunderbolt. On their way to the meeting spot, Ash and friends are attacked by Amoongus and Yamega. Amoongus uses Spore, but Brock sends out his Ludicolo, who uses Water Gun, to repel the attack. Brock then sends out Krogonk, and he tells the others to go on ahead while he stays behind to handle the situation. Ash, Misty, and the Pikachu accept, and they run away. Ludicolo proceeds to use Teeter Dance, which hilariously has everyone dance along while Brock's Paradise plays in the background. Ash, Misty, and the Pikachu continue making their way to the meeting spot, and as they do this, they are watched by Latias, who tenses up. Clearly, she wants to help. Ash, Misty, and Pikachu eventually reach a lake where they are attacked by Frillish and Yamask. Misty sends out Staryu to fight back, and like Brock, she offers to stay behind to keep the enemy at bay. Ash and Pikachu accept, and they keep going. Psyduck then bravely comes out of its Pokeball in order to fight as well, but its bravado is ended prematurely by Yamask, who tosses its mask at Psyduck 
who ends up hilariously running in circles and crashing into Staryu, much to the delight of Frillish and Yamask. Ash and Pikachu keep making their way to the meeting spot, but Pikachu is caught by Carnivine, though he is soon freed by Infernape. Gorgeist then joins the fray. This time, Ash offers to stay behind, leaving Pikachu to escort Mime Jr. alone. Ash sends out Halucha in order to even the odds, and the battle begins. Pikachu and Mime Jr. then finally reach the meeting spot where they are soon ambushed by Team Rocket, who keep up the ruse. However, the deception is broken at last when Mime Jr. grabs and holds Pikachu so that he can be caught by a net. Pikachu manages to break free, and Mime Jr. is caught instead. Since Pikachu is now aware of the danger, all the remaining Pokémon show up to attack him one by one, until he is surrounded. Seeing the perilous situation Pikachu is in, Latias opts to help by using her psychic powers to communicate to Ash that Pikachu needs help. Ash rushes to the rescue alongside Halucha and Infernape. Once they get to the scene, Halucha uses Flying Press on Seviper, while Infernape uses Flare Blitz to protect Pikachu from incoming nets. All of Team Rocket's Pokémon that were not present here soon arrive. So Ash and his Pokémon are surrounded and they face overwhelming odds. All of Team Rocket's Pokémon then attack together, but Ash and his Pokémon avoid the cluster of moves, which is now about to hit Team Rocket instead. But Wobbuffet bounces it back, so it's the other Pokémon that are now in danger. But they also avoid the combined attack which ends up hitting and shattering a nearby tree, launching a Slack-Off into the air. Ash manages to rescue Slack-Off by jumping up high, but he is then in danger once gravity kicks in. But thankfully, Latias, while cloaked, rushes in to save him, just as Misty and Brock arrive. However, unlike the last time Ash was saved by her, this time he calls out to her, knowing that it was her. This makes Latias finally reveal herself. Latias then proceeds to use Psychic to make Team Rocket and their Pokémon blast off again. After crash landing, Jesse, James, and Meowth get into an argument over whose fault it was that they failed. Unable to settle this dispute, they end up deciding to disband and go their separate ways, leaving behind their Pokémon, who are clearly saddened by this turn of events. The episode ends with Latias showing Ash and friends a vision of a Latios escaping a strange facility Mewtwo-style. Clearly, Latias wants to save this Latios, and she is hoping that Ash and friends will help her. So that's the short but detailed summary of the episode. Now it's time to highlight, analyze, and comment on my favorite moments and or moments that are noteworthy slash interesting. I love that most of Jesse and James's Pokemon return. Pretty much all the ones they still own appeared in this episode, and all the ones that they released, slash traded, slash gave away, slash have in training, got to at least appear in a fantasy. So basically, all of the Pokémon Jesse and James have ever owned got to appear in one episode, which is amazing and nostalgic. Their reunion was for sure a delight, and I also love that they both now just so happen to have a full team of six. This is the first time this has ever happened. 
Now, of course, Team Rocket's Pokémon were not the only ones that returned. Ash's Infernape and Halucha also got to return, as did Brock's Ludicolo and Misty Staryu. So this episode was jam-packed with returning Pokémon, which made it a joy to watch. I also liked this episode because it was just very funny. From Brock trying to get Mime Jr. to praise him in front of Officer Jenny, to Pikachu casting doubt on Mime Jr.'s act, to Yamask hitting Psyduck in the face with its mask, to having Team Rocket's Pokémon all attack at once, only to have all the attacks bounced back to them by Wobbuffet after Ash and his Pokémon avoided them, this episode was definitely hilarious and I had a blast watching it. Also, as always, I am glad that Latias is still hanging around Ash. Though this time, she not only saved Ash again, but Ash finally realized that she is around, thus forcing her to reveal herself at the long last, which allowed her to dispatch Team Rocket and to tell Ash and friends about Latios, who is in danger. I did not expect Latias to do so much in this episode. This was a nice surprise, especially since it set up the next episode. Also, I love that as in most of the previous episodes in this miniseries, this episode features an ending theme from the past that matches the focus of the episode. In this case, face forward Team Rocket. Finally, this better not be the last time we see Team Rocket. Them getting mad at each other, disbanding, and leaving their Pokémon behind is a horrible way to say goodbye to them. Especially since this feels like such a loose end. Hopefully they get to appear again one more time so that they can get a proper and happier send-off. But those are my thoughts on and analysis of the episode. Now it's time to bring this review to a close by going over my overall opinion of the episode. So, overall, I think that this episode was quite enjoyable, very entertaining, and really funny. Due to all the returning Pokémon and the hilarious character interactions slash moments. This is one of those episodes that is just a delight to watch. Now this all fell squarely within my expectations. But what I did not expect was that Latias would get to do so much that she would finally reveal herself and that she would set up the next episode by revealing Latios and his situation. All of this, paired with Team Rocket's sudden disbandment, are just the icing on the cake. This episode was more than just fun. It also had some serious and important moments. So yeah, overall I greatly enjoyed and liked this episode. But that's the review and the video. So, as always, leave your own thoughts down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and would like to see more like it, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I love Pokemon and I love making videos on both the anime and the games. Also, please consider clicking the links on screen so that you can check out more videos like this right away. Thank you very much for watching and let's meet again in the next video.